All right, so vector review today, tonight, I don't know, whenever you're watching this. This should all be reviewed, so I'm going to go fairly quickly. Let's first talk about some vocabulary. Um, how do I draw a, where are they? There they are, OK. So here's our vector. And when I talk about the tip of the vector, that's this side, the tail of the vector is this side. All vectors have a magnitude, which we represent with the length of the vector. And obviously, they have a direction, which we represent with the arrow. Um, so let's first talk about multiplication by a scalar. So sometimes we want to change the length of our vectors. And we do that by multiplying by a scalar. So let's define a vector. And let's call this vector A. And let's say we want to shorten A. So let's say we want like half A. Well, we just do a times 0.5, or a times a half, and that is going to give us a vector that is the exact same direction of a. It's just half as long. And let's make sure we get that. Uh, yeah, pretty good. Um, we could also take and lengthen the vector by, oh, I just messed something up. I don't know where everything went, but it went away. Hold on. Let's get it back. OK, there it is. So let's say we want to double the length of A. And we don't want to do that. We want to do this. We want 2A. Then we're going to have a vector that is the same direction, but twice as long. All right, so that is multiplication, multiplication by a scalar. And we can do that um, with any scalar and any vector. Uh, oh, how about negative? What happens when we multiply by a negative? So what if we wanted like negative one third of a? Well, that just switches the direction of a and cuts the length down by a third. So we're looking at about that. Oh, I'll undo that. Oh, I'm still figuring this out. Hey, we get an announcement. How nice. OK, so there, we got it fixed. That's 1 third of A right there. Negative 1 third of A. It switched the direction, and it shortened it as well. OK. Next up, let's talk about vector addition and vector subtraction. And there are two ways to do this. We can add and subtract components of vectors, the x component, the y component, or i hat, j hat, if you remember that from math. Or we can add them graphically, essentially, where we add the vectors tip to tail. So let's first talk about graphically. Let's define two vectors here. And let's say we've got vector A. And we'll do another one over here, vector B. So this is A, this is B. And if we want to add these guys graphically, we need to remember that we always add or subtract tip to tail. So that is tip of the first one to the tail of the second one. So for example, if we want to do A plus B, then we simply need to grab A and put B tip to tail with A. So we've got the tail of B on the tip of A. And the resultant vector is going to go from the tail of the first vector all the way to the tip of the second. 
And that is going to give us a plus b. All right. Now, notice that if we want to do b plus a, it's the exact same as a plus b. So let's do b. We'll take b and put him over here. And then we'll add a to him, tip to tail. And then notice that we can just take the resultant vector, hey, and it matches up. So a plus b is the same thing as b plus a. Yay. I believe that's what? The commutative law? Fantastic. If we want to do subtraction, then we simply multiply one or the other by negative 1. And we're still adding, but we're adding a negative. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So for instance, if I want to do a minus b, then oh, which one was a? Was it the blue one? B plus A, yeah, it's the blue one. So let's take and we'll grab A. And we want the opposite of B. So here's B. Let's take and draw in the opposite of B. Going that way. All right, and we're still going to do tip to tail. So we take B over here. And we've got a minus b, and we still draw in our resultant vector from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. All right, so in review here, we've got a, we've got negative b, and a plus negative b is that. Now we should probably talk about the fact that a minus b is not the same thing as b minus a. If we take b minus a, then here's vector b again. Oh, not that guy. Let's do this. Here's vector b. And negative a is going to be this guy. So if we take him and put him over here, with b minus a, and we go tip to tail, hey, notice that. That's not correct. It's actually the opposite. So we're going to draw this guy in here. Boom. So b minus a and a minus b are opposites of one another. So we do not say that they're equal. But we can do that. And we can see that that's the case. OK, let's actually put some numbers in here. All right, so if we're going to add and subtract these guys with numbers first, a lot of times when we're talking about direction headings, we have to review compass directions. So compass directions are not the same as the angles given in math class. So north is equal to 0 degrees. And now we go clockwise around the circle. East is 90 degrees, south is 180 degrees, and west is 270. And of course, we have everything in between. You can also say north is 360, um, either way. OK, so a lot of times we're giving compass directions when we talk about these guys instead of actual math directions. So we need to be aware of that. So here, let's do an example problem with compass directions. And all right, let's say that we start out walking. Uh, let's do a simple one, a right triangle. Let's say we start out walking due east for 300 meters. And then we go and turn and do due south for 100 meters. Ah. What is our displacement? And remember, displacement was the position and direction that you are from where you started. How far away and in which direction are you from where you started? So we just complete the triangle here. Our resultant goes from tail of the first to the tip of the last. And this is a right triangle, since we went due east and then due south. So we'll draw that in here. 
And we need both the magnitude and the direction here. So magnitude is easy. It's Pythagorean theorem. The square root of 300 squared plus 100 squared. which is 316 meters to three sig figs. And here's where we throw in some trig. Uh, we are going to find that angle. So that is going to be the tangent of uh, this angle. So we've got the tangent of, let's call it angle A, is equal to opposite, which is 100, over adjacent, which is 300. So we've got the tangent of A is equal to one-third. We take the inverse tangent of both sides. So A is equal to the inverse tangent of one-third. Throwing that into the calculator, we get, we get 15, sorry, 18.4. If you got 0.321, you are in radians. And we want degrees because we're measuring angles in degrees right here. So we've got 18.4 degrees. Now, it's important to interpret that. That is not a compass direction. That is just the angle of the triangle. If we want the compass direction, we try to draw in a little compass here. We started at 0, 90 plus 18.4. So our answer is 316 meters at 108.4 degrees compass. So that is adding vectors using the magnitude and direction format. And you also need to be aware that if we are adding non-right triangles, so let's say this was vector A, and this was vector B, and this is not a right triangle, then we get law of sines, law of cosines. To find our angles and our magnitudes. All right, so you got to be aware of that. You might want to review law of sines and law of cosines in addition. Okay, let's talk about adding vectors a different way. This is adding it using components. All right, so let's say we want to find the components of our vector, and then we're going to use that in order to add and subtract them. So let's talk about vector A. And we want to find both the x component and the y components of vector A. So let's do some dotted lines. Oh, this is going to be so fun. So the x component is like if we took a flashlight up above and shined it straight down on vector A. That's going to give us a shadow on the ground of vector A. That is the x component. And the y component is going to be like taking a flashlight on the left hand side and shining it on vector A and that's going to give us a shadow on the wall which is going to be the vertical component alright and we can call this A sub X and this can be A sub Y and let's go ahead and talk about trigonometry if we call this angle theta then the sine of theta is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse. So that's the y component divided by a. And solving for a sub y, we get a y equals vector a times the sine of the angle. The cosine of angle theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be a x over a. Simple, uh, Solving for AX, we've got the X component of vector A is equal to the magnitude times the cosine of theta. All right, so let's say vector A was 18 units long and the angle theta is 30 degrees. Then AX is just going to be 18 cos 30. And AY is going to be 18 sine 30. So throwing those into the calculator, we've got 15.6. 
and here it's just half of 18, 9. So now we can talk about vector A in what's called component form. And I'm going to use this notation talking about vector A. It's going to be the x component 15.6 with an x hat plus 9 y hat. Um, in math, the other notation that you're going to see is vector A is 15.6 i hat plus 9 9 j hat. Now this is just vector addition. We're taking vector x and adding it to vector y. And when we do that, tip to tail, like we did up here, you take vector x, this guy, and add him to vector y, tip to tail, you get vector A. All right, so that's all we're doing. It's kind of the opposite, the reverse of vector addition. So we find the components of A, and there it is, piece of cake. It's just Sokotoa. Um, so now we can use vector notation, sorry, component notation, to add and subtract vectors very easily. So let's say we've got vector A is 4i hat plus 3j hat, and I will be using i's and j's and x's and y's, x hat, y hat interchangeably. Vector b is negative 6i hat minus 2j hat. And I want to know what is a plus b. Just add the components. So it's going to be 4 plus negative 6 i hat, and it's going to be plus the quantity of 3 plus negative 2 j hat. And we can see that we get negative 2 i hat plus 1 j hat. So that would be a plus b. We can do a minus b. We can do 6a plus 4b. We can do 18a minus 263b. Just multiply through by the scalar. So for instance, like if we wanted to do 2a, then we would just multiply the components by 2. And we'd get 8i hat plus 6j hat. And we can add 2a to b. We can subtract b from 2a. Yada, 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 yada. All right? <clears throat> so now we have two different ways to add and subtract vectors. We can use magnitude and direction form, which we're going to use probably law of sines and law of cosines a whole bunch. Or we can resolve the vectors into their components and add and subtract with component form. Uh, pick the one that is most convenient. Um, for instance, sometimes you're going to be multiple adding and subtracting three and four vectors. Like if it's A plus B plus C plus D, that would be a whole lot of work if you had magnitude and direction. You'd make three different triangles to finally find out what that is. Okay, except I drew that wrong because I didn't follow my rules. I've got to go from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. So it's that. That would be our final vector, A plus C, B plus C plus D. If you resolve A, B, C, and D into their components and just add the components, then it becomes very simple. So I would recommend definitely for multiple additions and subtractions, uh, adding components rather than magnitude and directions.